Good morning, everyone. We're going to go over the practice quiz. I can use function notation for and preparation for the quiz tomorrow. And this is the learning target right here. I can evaluate and interpret function notation. So we've been working on using function notation to create graphs. You can see that right here we have d of x. And we have an equation over there given by d of x. Remember, d of x is a name for y. We're given three x values. We're going to plug those in and get our three y values. Once we have those three y values, we can graph the ordered pair. And since we're le uh, learning linear functions, they should end up linear in a straight line, just in case you forget that. It's right there at the bottom as a reminder. So let's go ahead and plug in all three of these values. So our first value that we're going to plug in is negative 1 for x. So that would give us d of negative 1. Over on the other side, if we replace our x value with negative 1, we get 4 minus 5 times negative 1. We can now calculate this. Following our order of operations, we get the multiplication first. So negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. That gives us 4 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9, so we have d of negative 1, or our y value, is 9. That's our first y value that we can plug in. And we will put that right here to go along with the x value we just put in. Now I want you to make sure that you leave this work. I do not have space to leave that work, so I'm going to erase it here, but please leave that and show that work on the quiz. The next x value we're going to plug in is 0, so we get d of 0 d of 0 equals 4 minus 5 times 0. But negative 5 times 0 will be 0, so we get 4 minus 0, and 4 minus 0 is just 4. So we get d of 0 equals 4. That gives us our second y value, and we are going to get one more, graph them all, and make sure that they line up straight so we can check our calculations that way. We get d of 2 next, and on the right-hand side, that gives us 4 minus 5 times 2. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, so we get 4 minus 10. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. So we get d of 2 equals negative 6. Those are our three pairs. Now we just need to graph them over on the uh, co coordinate plane over here. So we get negative 1, 9. That will be up here on our graph. Let's see. Make that a little bigger. Then we get 0, 4. 0, 4 will be here, right on the y-axis. And then we have 2, negative 6. 2, negative 6 will be down here. Those should all line up in a straight line. Not the most precise thing with this touch screen here, but they line up nicely. And we have our first graph created using that function notation. We'll do one more practice with this. So this function f of x again is a name for y. So we're going to plug in these new x values into our new equation and that will give us our new graph. So our first x value is negative 2. So we're going to do f of negative 2. When we replace x with that negative 2 on the right hand side we get 4 times negative 2 minus 1. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we get negative 8 minus 1, which is negative 9. So we get f of 2 equals negative 9. That's our first y value. Again, please keep this work shown so I can grade your quiz properly tomorrow. Second x value, get f of 0. f of 0 equals 4 times 0 minus 1. 4 times 0 is 0, so we get 0 minus 1, which is negative 1 f of 0 equals negative 1. That is our second y value there. One more to go, and then we can graph all three of them. So our last one is f of 2. f of 2 equals 4 times 2 minus 1. 4 times 2 is 8, so we get 8 minus 1. 8 minus 1 is 7. f of 2 equals 7. All right, I just noticed a typo here, which I will fix in a little bit. I said to plug in a 5, but then went with a 2 here. So we're going to have that 2 value still, so we can keep it in our table of values. All righty. Now that we have these three ready to go, we can graph them. So negative 2, negative 9 would be down here. 
0, negative 1 would be right there. And 2, 7 would be up here. Those three should line up nicely in a straight line. And we are now finished with our graph. The last set of questions asks us to write sentences from function notation. So we have to take this and we have to write a sentence with its meaning. Now this phrase right here, let c of t be, tells us what uh, c of t and any of its variations are. So it says that c of t is the number of customers in a restaurant. So if we see c of 5, that's the number of customers in a restaurant. c of 2, that's the number of customers in a restaurant. c of 6, that's the number of customers in a restaurant. So we're going to continue to use that notation. We also need to know what the variable t means, and that is given right here. t means the hours after 8 a.m. So right here, when we're given t, and when we replace it with something, that is talking about the hours after 8 a.m. So this 5 right here means 5 hours after 8 a.m. If it's 5 hours after 8 a.m., it is 1 o'clock p.m., so that's what I'm going to use in my sentence. Either one would be fine. I just feel like 1 o'clock p.m. flows a little bit better with English. So reading this all together, C of 5 is the number of customers in a restaurant, and the 5 tells us that it is 1 o'clock p.m. So that part of the sentence is going to be the number of customers in a restaurant at 1 p.m. All right, moving on, the equal symbol means is or equals, or there's a few phrases we can use. And then 20 is just 20. So finishing out this sentence, we could say the number of customers in a restaurant at 1 p.m. is equal to 20. I think that flows a little bit awkwardly, so I'm going to reword this. I'm going to say there are 20 customers in a restaurant at 1 p.m. I feel like that sentence flows a little bit better. They both mean the same thing, so I do not care what you write as long as it has that same meaning. Moving on to the next one, we see a couple of places where we have a variation of C of T right there and right there. Both of those are going to be talking about the number of customers in a restaurant, just like we had last time. All right, let's go over the 2 and the 10. The 2 means 2 hours after 8 a.m. That means that it's 10 o'clock a.m. And the 10 means 10 hours after 8 a.m. 10 hours after 8 a.m. would be, let's see, 4, hang on a second, sorry. 4 and 6 would be 6 in the afternoon. All right, so we're going to use those. C of 2 then, that part of the equation would read this way. So I'm going to type that in. C of 2 would be the number of customers in a restaurant at 10 a.m. Then we've got our equal symbol again, so we say is equal to is equal to, and then C of 10 would be the number of customers in a restaurant at 6 p.m. All right, I'm going to circle these parts. We're going to go through it one more time. I'm going to circle and underline where they come from. All right, so C of 2 means the number of customers in a restaurant. The 2 tells us that it's 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m., equal symbol is equal to C of 10 is the number of customers in a restaurant. And then the 10 tells us it is 6 p.m. So that phrase all comes from there. Take note that we do not know how many customers are actually in there. We just know that they're equal, and it's okay that we don't know the actual number of customers. That's not what the phrase is saying. So let's move on to the next one. All right, C of 5. So again, that's the number of customers in a restaurant. 5 means 5 hours after 8 a.m. 5 hours after 8 a.m. would be 1 p.m. C of 6 would be the number of customers in a restaurant. 
the six would mean six hours after 8 a.m. Six hours after 8 a.m. would be 2 p.m. And then we have a different symbol here than before. That's the greater than symbol. So we're going to use that name in our sentence. So let's go ahead and write our sentence now for this one. All right. So we say C of 5 is the number of customers in a restaurant at 1 p.m. Greater than symbol is greater than. And then C of 6 would be the number of customers in a restaurant at 2 p.m. Again, we do not know how many customers are there. We just know that it's greater at one time than the other. So circling these and underlining, we get C of 5. C of 5 is the number of customers in a restaurant. That 5 tells us that it's 1 p.m. Greater than symbol says is greater than C of 6 the number of customers in a restaurant, and then the six finally tells us it's 2 p.m. So there's our sentence, and that is the end of our practice quiz. Thank you very much, and good luck.